Hello, everybody. This is Analytical Survival, and welcome to interview number one with noted YouTube guest Bibles and Barbells. Today, we'll be delving into the world of fitness and particularly how it relates to strength training. Bibles and Barbells is both a pastor and an avid bodybuilder. He has competed in many bodybuilding competitions throughout the years. Today, he's going to share some of his wisdom with the audience and some practical ways that we can all improve our core strength. Bibles and Barbells, welcome to the Analytical Survival Channel. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure, and I'm really honored to be part of this interview and um, watch your channel. I think you're one of the best on YouTube and uh, looking forward to uh, making some videos with you. Thank you again. Oh, awesome, brother. Respect right back at you, brother. Let's jump right on in. Let me start off with a very broad question here, and I want to ask you directly, what can strength training do for a prepper? And I know that may seem like a simple question, but I'd like you as an authority who's been doing this for a long, long time to really break this down for the audience. Tell us in your own extensive experience, what's the total picture behind strength training? Okay. Strength training uh, is going to enable a prepper uh, basically to better prepare to handle a grid down scenario type environment. Uh, as we know, in a grid down scenario, there's lots of stresses that are going to be placed on the body, uh, both physically and mentally. And um, the strength training aspect of it will really uh, make a big, be a big part of this. Uh, you know, it's, you need to know that our bodies are amazing machines. And when we give them what they need to operate, examples like uh, good food, proper supplementation, resistance training, like we're going to talk a little bit about tonight, they will perform better. You know, preppers are faced with enormous amounts of stress, i.e. physical labor. Um, strength training will help condition the body and make it a prepper able to operate better in a grid down type of environment. You know, the, the, the total picture behind strength training is, is fairly simple. Um, through resistance training, when we stimulate our muscles with weights or some other form, uh, the muscles are placed under stress. And because of those stresses, uh, the weights and the rep, the repetitions that we do, the body is able to respond by growing, uh, coming back bigger and stronger. Uh, this is going to help the prepper in every area of their life, you know, their work life, their leisure activities. Um, being physically fit you'll have a better outlook on life, um, more confidence, ability to compete if that's something you, you desire, or just be able to face the everyday pressures of life with a better attitude. You know, when, you, when, the, when, you, when a person feels and looks good, uh, their whole outlook on life uh, changes for the better. Awesome. Well put, well put. I also know that diet diet and the foods we eat diet plays a, a very important role in strength training a couple of things here how much protein should a strength trainer ideally consume uh, uh, should that protein be in supplement form or through through natural foods so that's the first part of the question the second part is while we're on the subject of supplements uh, what kinds of specific supplements uh, other than protein uh, can be helpful for building strength uh, great great question just, just note that, uh, you know, not being a medical professional, this, this, a lot of this is based on uh, my personal experiences, but diet plays a key role. In fact, diets, at least 70% of the strength uh, training battle. You know, the, the old adage, you are truly what you eat, is, is really uh, accurate. And the old, uh, if you remember the old computer jargon, garbage in, garbage out, if you put garbage into your body, i.e. eating bad foods and not take care of it, you get garbage out, you get bad results. As far as protein goes, it's a, it's a pretty complex question and you ask people, you'll get many different uh, responses. Basically, proteins are amino acids, they're building blocks of muscle and therefore it's important to get proper amounts but not to go overboard with too much protein uh, because it's a, too much of a shock on the system and have a negative effect on your on our bodies. There are many food sources, you know, i.e. lean lean meats, fish, chicken, uh, turkey, and then there's also supplements, like um, many people know about whey protein or weight gain protein, egg-based protein, and, and uh, milk-based proteins. Uh, what I do when I train, the first thing I would, I would tell somebody that's embarking 
uh, on this, on eating right and, and their diet, is to, is to write down what you're eating and what you're drinking. Uh, what I do when I train is I keep a food log. I write down basically everything I eat and drink uh, during the course of any given day. And that way I'm better able to see how my body's responding uh, to my diet. Uh, when I was training for my bodybuilding and powerlifting competitions, I would generally try to get uh, one gram of protein per pound of body weight on the days that I trained. So if I weighed 190 pounds, I'd get 190 grams of protein that particular day, and I'd get at least 60% from food, and the 40% would come from supplements like, you know, like whey protein. So, you know, uh, in that respect, that's what I did. Uh, today, there's so many products on the market and so many things out there, it'll make your head spin. Um, you know, back when I competed, a lot of times, in fact, I remember squatting nearly 600 pounds in the gym. And at the time, I was eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and drinking chocolate milk. So my body was responding to that and not, you know, just depending on supplementation. But you always want balance um, in your life, and that includes your supplementation routine. Uh, if I had to rank them in order of importance, I would say the, the food I eat should be, uh, would be fresh, would be of high quality, i.e. non-GMO, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables, a good water, drink good water, a high quality vitamin and mineral supplement, and then extra amino acids, essential fatty acids like fish oil, extra B complex and vitamin C uh, to handle the stresses. And then, of course, a good protein supplement like a whey or even now they have these vegan for those people that like myself that are lactose intolerant uh, with age. Uh, so the next tier I would look at would be more strength training type supplements and a good one here, a very popular one, is creatine. Lots of people know about it. It's a, it's a real proven uh, to help you get a little bit stronger, a little bit bigger, give you help your endurance. It just gives a little bit of a, a boost to the body. And then there's things like testosterone boosters that are you know on a tier by themselves, and of course those, if cycled correctly, uh, can help as well. So you know it's it's really a complex question. I'd recommend a good diet, basic supplementation with a few strength-related supplements like I mentioned, like creatine. Also, there's pre-workout supplements you could take to help you focus better during a, a contest. And while we're on the, that topic, you know, I competed as a drug-free for life competitor. Uh, it means I've never taken any illegal or banned substances to enhance my physique or give me advantage over someone else. So, you know, I pride myself in all the uh, 30 plus years of training that I've had to be able to stay drug free. And I've turned that into speaking with a lot of many young athletes to tell them about the detrimental use of steroids and other types of uh, substances. So great question. That's uh, that's awesome. Uh, congratulations on the drug free uh, training. You know, you know uh, lately I've really enjoyed a lot of your YouTube videos because a lot of them uh, are on, you know, strength training and weight lifting. But I notice a lot of that's in the gym, which I can understand has all that heavy gear. But what about strength training? from your own home is it possible for um, someone like myself or a general prepper out there to gain a solid degree of strength you know at home by only doing push-ups or uh, pull-ups and perhaps some dumbbell work that is exercises that's only using their weight as resistance yes that's that's another really good question believe it or not most of my training has been at home uh, in my garage a lot of my earlier videos you'll see are in my garage. They're actually filmed in the garage. Uh, the last year or so, I donated my weights uh, to a local, the local fire department that was in need. And so a lot of my newer videos now are in the gym where, because I don't have a, my home gym set up, but you, I can still do, and I still do to this day, work out at home, training with things like, uh, you know, dumb, some light dumbbells, um, just a flat bench. Uh, things like training bands or, you know, those rubber bands that you, you hold in your hand that have different types of tension on them, uh, you know, like a physio ball uh, that you 
can do abdominals on. And many sporting goods stores sell this stuff. It's really cheap. And a person that's really not looking to go to the gym can definitely uh, see great gains uh, by working at home and building their body. Like you said, uh, there's several different ways you could do push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, planks, uh, and then just flexing and squeezing uh, the muscles, like practicing posing, can have a really great effect and a person can make really great gains. So I would say yes, with some simple movements at home, whether it's in the garage or in a, in a, you know, in the house or outside, um, you could definitely make great gains in your home gym. Hmm. That, that's awesome. I, I also wanted to sort of piggyback on that, and I want to talk about talk about age because uh, when I look at the demographics of my channel, I know that a lot of my listeners are middle aged, and that is between forty five and fifty five, as I am as well. So, what sort of tips do you have for us for this age group, and what kind of realistic results can we expect at our age? Well, I'm in that age group as well. Um, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, one of the things I, I would recommend that people do, um, n- not only this age, but at any age, is, you know, get uh, first see their doctor, get some get clearance to train, you know, especially in the age group you're mentioning here, of which, again, I'm a part of. And, and a, same thing with going along with starting a new diet or changing uh, your eating habits abruptly or even taking supplements. Get medical clearance and talk to your doctor. It's real important. Um, keep, them, keep them in on the loop. Once that's taken care of, a person in this age group um, should start out very light. You don't need to you know, start out heavy. Uh, basic exercises, basic movements, not trying to lift too heavy, and a gradual progression and a well-organized approach is, is, is the best way to approach this. Again, the training log for your diet and also for what you're doing physically will help a great deal uh, to keep you on track and to help you later on when you go back and look at your progress. Uh, I've developed one I could send out and make available to people. That's no problem. Also, I think it's important to, you know, listen to your body. Um, People in this age group know their bodies fairly well, and they'll be able to listen to their bodies uh, and know when your body's going to tell you when you when it's hurting or when it needs to rest or even when you can even push it farther and harder. The key is to listen to your body. Start out slow, basic movements, uh, get a good stretching routine, good warm-up routine, and most of all, be patient. <laughs> good advice. Patience, uh, definitely a virtue. <laughs> this next question sort of goes hand in hand with the last, which is, uh, what sort of advice do you have for, um, say, a forty-five-year-old who's just starting out, but who also wants to stick with it? So, so persistence here. How do they take their strength, strength training to the next level? Uh, but they also don't want to quit after only a few months. Now, I, I know you've done a lot of competitions and tournaments, and maybe you yourself felt like slacking off uh, plenty of times along the way. So in your experienced opinion, again, uh, uh, what kind of tips do you have for sticking with a strength training program and, and breaking through any temptations to quit? If I was a person at, at this age group, I would tell myself this. Um, You know, I'm 45 years old. I want to continue to live a productive and active life and be the best I can be. You know, I want to be able to be healthy and fit for my family and for myself. And a good, sensible, sound strength training program, along with a good diet and a healthy lifestyle. You know, getting enough sleep, being drug free, drinking moderately, um, et cetera, should be that person's goal. And and again, I'll stress, a consistent program is key to achieving uh, your strength gains. You know, I believe that once a person 45 or older sees how well their body responds when they give it what it needs, they'll be motivated to continue, you know, and make it part of their, uh, their everyday lifestyle. And then to go along with that, a good support system at home. You know, a husband or wife working out together, in my case, at this point in my life, I work out with my 22-year-old daughter. I'm motivated to help her and watch her reach her fitness goals. So again, a good partner or friend to train with can be a big factor in motivating someone uh, to stick with a program. 
you know, we can call it like an accountability partner. Uh, yeah, partners definitely do help. Uh, we're we're coming up to the end of this segment, so are there any last words of advice for, for uh, the audience, for, for preppers who are thinking of, you know, hitting those weights? Yeah, yeah, I, I would give this advice. I would say today's the day. Yesterday is past and tomorrow is not guaranteed. You know, you need to start taking care of yourself today. And again, a good sensible resistance and strength training program is a proven way to stay strong and healthy. Um, I always look back to my ministry verse on, on my channel, uh, Bibles and Barbells. My, I have a, like a slogan or a verse from the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 40, verse 29, where it says, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. You know, and I believe that today, more than ever, people should be involved in some type of strength training program. It'll help us face the obstacles that come our way, give us a better outlook on life, and along with a good accountability partner, a good structure, and a good trainer, if necessary, to help a person get started. But the main thing is, most of all, get started. You know, as preppers, uh, we're always preparing for other things, and sometimes we take our, our bodies for granted, but it's a very, very important piece of this, um, of this uh, prepping puzzle. Uh, and I, again, I would say in the words of Lee Haney, famous bodybuilder, we train to stimulate, not to annihilate. Be, be really sensible in your, your training approach. All right, brother. Excellent words of wisdom. Well, folks, that's all the time we have. I want to thank Bibles and Barbells for taking the time out of his busy schedule to be with us here. And folks, if you haven't already done so, you can check out Bibles and Barbells on YouTube, as well as all of his great videos there. And I'll be putting up a link in the description box. Please don't forget to subscribe. And once again, this is Analytical Survival. Stay safe, strong, and healthy, brothers and sisters. 